Dun dun dun! <laughs> F-bomb. <laughs> I'm dropping F-bombs up in here. Hope everybody's doing well. It's still, yes, officially morning time. Uh, I've been doing some trading. In fact, I'm going to go back take a look and see. Yeah, winning, winning, winning. Just nothing but wins. Just all wins all the time. Or, <laughs> or should I say I'm taking away some of the losses. <laughs> Either way, it's all good. Um, today, the thumbnail that I have up is what I call the um, Jupiter 2 or the saucer section from the guys at Vortec, Paxton, yada, yada, yada. And what they did, if you take a close look at it, and I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in on it myself. So if you take a close look at it, what they have is, this is, we're going to talk today about the different types of, like, the bonnets, basically, or in, and or enclosures for blow-through carbureted applications. So we're going to talk a little bit about does there need to be more science put into these? Because we basically here are the ranges that we have. We have ranges from fairly simple, you know, aluminum castings that bolt on top of the carburetor, you know, basically in place of an air cleaner. And that the air is forced in either from a turbo or supercharger into this bonnet and then into the carburetor. And then on the other end of the spectrum is something that encloses the carburetor completely. So all the fuel has to flow in usually through bulkhead fittings. And then the whole carburetor, meaning the bowls and the vents and everything is sealed. So you're not just pressurizing the carburetor, you're pressurizing everything. The only thing that you have to make sure in that instance is that basically you have the fuel pressure regulator boost referenced um, ab above the carburetor and not below it. You have to have the, the, car the fuel flow to the carburetor boost reference because if you have seven pounds of boost in the enclosure applied to the carburetor and you only have seven pounds of fuel pressure from the pump, you just won't have any fuel flow. So you need to have seven pounds of delta pressure, meaning that the fuel pressure supplied by the pump needs to be six or seven pounds on a carburetor application greater than whatever boost you run. So you have to have a pump that's capable of doing that. And also you have to have a setup so that the fuel will continue to flow and feed the carburetor even under boost because boost is obviously wanting to push that. So then in a carburetor enclosure, everything kind of works the way that it's supposed to. The only things really that you have to worry about is you, you don't want to collapse the, um, the uh, flow bowls. Um, you don't have to worry so much about um, leakage through the throttle shafts and stuff. You don't have to have sealed throttle shafts and stuff because there's pressure on both sides of it. So it's not going to want to push fuel out one side or the other. They work fairly well. The downside, and then you can use, and we have used non-blow through carburetors in these enclosures, which is kind of nice. You just have to work on, uh, you know, jetting and power valves and stuff. But here's the thing. <laughs> when we've run dedicated blow through carburetors in there, it has worked a little better. And also the problem is when you're running these carburetors inside these enclosures, like the Vortec one, the closure enclosure itself makes it much more difficult to work on and tune the carburetor. Now, once you get it tuned, you shouldn't have to do a bunch more things at it unless you're, you know, going on one of these drag and drive events where you're going at different altitudes and you have to go in and change jetting and that kind of stuff. That's where maybe having uh, like the external jetted carburetors like that. Um, we use a Percy setup where you could just, uh, uh, you have an external uh, jet adjustment uh, or jet adjustment and you, we can, you just adjust it and then, and you have a little set screw that you set down. We've used those a lot and it makes jetting the carburetor so much faster as long as with your, you're within a given range. And so that might be a good thing, but having to take the enclosure apart and sometimes take the carburetor out and disconnect the fuel lines and all that stuff to get, to get at the bowls and change jetting. It's much more problematic and just much more time consuming with a big carbon closure. That's why the bonnets that go on top of there, we, we run the one from Kevin at CSU. Some of them, and there are different designs of these bonnets too. And, and there's a reason for the different designs of these bonnets. If you look at them, what you're trying to do obviously is get even flow from your supercharger or turbocharger into the carburetor into everywhere in the carburetors. So you don't want all of the few, all of the airflow to be concentrated on the secondary side of the equation or concentrated on the primary side, which when you look at the bonnets that go onto a carburetor, the direction of the airflow into the carburetor sometimes is very critical. Sometimes they won't work. We've had lots of problems with carburetor bonnets 
if the car if the bonnet is not straight in line with the carburetor, ba basically front to the back of the engine. So when we do that and the air is flowing in, what happens is we have we we always get because we monitor the fuel flow on the A and B side, basically the primary and secondary side, and we monitor the fuel flow. What we normally try to do for running a naturally aspirated motor is we try to get even fuel flow on the primary and secondary side at wide open throttle. And the reason that we try to do that is because if you have an intake manifold, you're trying to get even fuel flow to the front and back cylinders. So that's one way that we try to go about that. The ideal way obviously would be to run 802 sensors and find out exactly what's going on. With a carburetor, it would be hard to get <laughs> individual cylinders. You could do some corner jetting and stuff and get a little bit better, but you'll never get the thing to be like it is with fuel injection, where you could have the right air fuel under every combination of RPM and 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 boost and map and all that stuff. But you you can change that a little bit. And then the nice thing about these blow through carburetors, which you would use with a bonnet like that, is like the CSU one has boost reference power valves. So not only can you jet it with jetting and air bleeds and all of the things that we normally do on a naturally aspirated carburetor, but also boost reference power valves add fuel based on at, at some given like boost pressure, which, which works fairly well. And you can adjust the primary and the secondary side differently because they have individual adjustments, which is kind of nice. So you should be able to dial these things in. I personally, I don't know if it's possible and I get asked this all the time. I don't know if it's possible to <laughs> adjust one of these blow through carburetors so that it's perfect at cruise and idle and wide open throttle when you're drag racing. I don't know if that's possible. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe I need to have Kevin on and do an interview with him and find out if, if guys are doing that. Um, I haven't spent the time to try to do that because when I'm on the dyno, we don't do that. We don't cruise the thing. We could, you know, we could run it at, at some part throttle with 30 or 40 foot pounds of load or whatever and simulate going down the street. And we could try to do that. But for what I'm doing, it's just not that important. But it is if you're actually going to put it in a car. So something to think about. So we have a bunch of different kinds of these blow through bonnets. Some of them are, are I call slimline because <laughs> they're, they're designed for a lot of times with a carburetor, especially on a high rise intake manifold and a low hood line. You have a limited amount of space between the carburetor and the hood. So a lot of times these bigger bonnets, which tend to work better and have give better um, airflow distribution, they just won't fit under the hood. And so you see these things stick up out of the hood sometimes. <clears throat> they have some that have dividers in the middle, hopefully to get all the airflow, you know, going in and then evenly distributed among the carburetor. Again, I, <laughs> I, I, know, I know what the design is supposed to do. I just haven't seen that happen perfectly. And then, like I said, the angle of, of the entry is, is super critical because what happens with airflow when you're forcing air into this bond, it, it wants to stack up against the backside, against the back wall. And that kind of pushes more airflow into the backside. So if you have more airflow in there, you have to have more fuel. And then are the back cylinders, you know, essentially carrying the heavy load and making more power than the front cylinders are? It, it's all of that stuff that... Um, takes an awful lot of uh, testing and, and science to try to figure out. But we've run lots of blow through stuff and we've run them both with single plane and dual plane intake manifolds. In fact, I did a shootout or shoot, I did a test with an LS where we ran a blow through, we ran the motor, it was an LS motor. We ran it with a single plane around with a dual plane NA. And then we ran it with a single plane and a dual plane carbureted. And I can tell you that, <laughs> that the air field distribution um, on a carbureted up on these carbureted manifolds to begin with, and then on the on the boosted ones was not ideal because we ran 802 sensors. And I remember telling Brulee, look, I just don't ever want to do that again because it shouldn't even run with as far off as it is. And I don't know why it's still working because <laughs> because it was pretty far off. But but when you jet it to get the lean one safe, then the thing makes less power and stuff. So it's it it, it can be problematic. So, and the, the cool thing, if you take a look at the photo of the thumbnail of the Vortec one, so I'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and get a poll going here early.
So have you run a blow through carb motor with a carb bonnet? So the blow through application, have you guys ever run one of these? So that if you take a look at the Vortec one, here's the interesting thing about the Vortec deal is that the air comes into the saucer section and it comes in and first of all, in a circular motion and kind of circles around the outer edge like air would because it, you know, it's going to pressurize the whole thing kind of, but there are a couple of things that try to diffuse the air basically and try to get it, try to get more even flow into this, uh, into the carburetor. And the way that they've done this is two things. One is they have a filter inside the box. So there's a filter that goes in and then there's a lid that goes in and it pressurizes everything inside there, including the filter. So the pressurized air has to go through this filter, which would act as a diffuser anyway. The other thing that they do is, as I said, when the air comes in from the inlet, uh, from, the, from the discharge of the supercharger or the turbo into this, and you could also run an intercooler before that if you wanted to cool it off even further, which, which helps. So the air comes into this bonnet, circles around the outside. And then when it comes to uh, an, there's a there's a divider wall right before it would come back around and basically interfere with the inlet flow. So right before it does that, it has a divider wall that then aims the airflow back in toward the filter. So it's it's. It all makes sense and it all seems like it should work fairly well. And I've run them and they've, they've worked. I just don't know on real high horsepower applications if this design is the way to go. I don't really see guys running these, you know, at drag week, if they're running a blow through deal. If I haven't seen guys running these on super high horsepower deals, I think maybe this design would be more applicable for the average guy, you know, putting it on there. It looks cool. Like I said, I would definitely put Jupiter two on the side of mine. If I had one, um, it, it would say, it would say lost in space or danger. Will Robinson. And I've seen other ones that incorporate intercoolers inside this kind of saucer section too, which is another good idea because that way you can have the, you know, it, the, the intercooler also would act as a diffuser and then get the airflow going in. I did a test on one of those. I think that that video is up. Um, so the, the, this begs the question, we have these different types of blow through bonnets and enclosures and the, the saucer section and, and intercooler sections also. Um, and the other thing that is, is the one step away from this is guys use these elbows going into these carbureted deals and with, but with EFI and they, they somehow seem to think that this elbow going into the, into the, um, single plane, or I get, you could also do it with the dual plane manifold, but this elbow and the, the intake manifold that the elbow somehow adds runner length to this. <laughs> and so you guys know the elbow adds no runner length to that. It does add plenum volume and it would help direct the airflow. And so maybe if you had it coming in both from the sides or from the front and the back, or, you know, maybe you would have something, but quite honestly, if you're blowing the air in and it has to make that 90 degree turn, it's going to be aimed directly down to the floor of the plenum anyway, and then going to be distributed the way that it's distributed. It'd be interesting to see what the what the airflow distribution would be to all the cylinders in a single plane manifold. What I suspect and what we saw, we didn't do the elbow like that we were doing a carburetor, but what I would suspect is it's going to be a function of the intake manifold and not the elbow. The distribution would be a function of what's going on with the manifold most notably the difference in the design where we have four long and four short runners that want to make power at different operating ranges. And then they had different, especially with the carburetor, had different fluctuating air fuel uh, numbers through the RPM range because where the thing is drawing and it's not drawing the signals, you know, it's got more signal to the carburetor, less signal to the carburetor, and the runner length is efficient and the runner length is not efficient. So you get a lot of things going on there. Um, so this begs the question, should should there be a better design? That, <laughs> is there a better design that could make this, you know, could make this work even better? I'm I'm curious what I what I'm hoping that Elbrock does is uses their new carburetor design and then introduces a blow through carburetor with the things that they have in their NA carburetor. Because I think that that would be a pretty killer combination. So Edelbrock, if you aren't doing that already, which I suspect that you are, please do that. <laughs> you guys need to make one. You guys need to make a 
a blow through carburetor for that so that it can incorporate all the tuning potential, which that carburetor has a lot of and, and already seems to make pretty good power. And a, even with the same air fuel, which is interesting. So I'll be curious to see if they're able to do that, you know, cause that those are gains with the carburetor, but what do you guys think? Should there, are there, are there other bonnet designs that um, like if we went and did a giant like 180 degree turn and then went straight down into the carburetor, would that be better? Um, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. So I will scroll back, scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. So if, if for, I'm sure the most of you guys heard last night, we, we went for a walk yesterday and I mean, I'll, I'll post the video up on social media or something. Cause I think Lisa already did. Um, let me see what, uh, you guys should follow. She had, <laughs> you guys should follow, um, Lisa's the puppies TikTok. It's at, uh, at the spoiled, the spoiled goldens. Um, so if you want to see the puppies and also the video of Milo, of Milo, um, helping the turtle because <laughs> we found this random turtle walking across fields basically. And he, we, we happened to intersect him when he was walking right across the trail where we were taking a dog for a walk to go up in the hills. And he was just walking across the trail. So Milo ran over and was pushing him and helping him get back across into the weeds where he could hide. But we ended up grabbing him and bringing him back to the Creek and, when I was walking over there, you know, he was hiding because he doesn't he doesn't know that we're trying to help him. But as soon as he started hearing the water and sensing that, he was like, OK, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And as soon as I set him down, he just like motored off into the creek. It was awesome, though. So it was a little catch and release thing. But and then the, all of the puppies, the, the puppy craziness is on there. So Lisa is posting a bunch of stuff. So they have their own. They have their own TikTok channel or whatever. I don't do TikTok, but but if you guys want to see it, it's it's up there. I love the channel, especially whenever you did when you did tests on the four six single overhead cam, the like the four six two valve motors. I, I want to do a, another big bang of one of those. Special Agent James, four six is one of my favorites. <laughs> do you have any saucers full of secrets? Secret saucers. Montana's in the house. JPL's in the house. Burn, Honda Tech, Russell, yeah, dude. <laughs> Let's see. What LS is a $700 Summit Racing Turbo Best Suited for? If you're talking about their T6 S475, it would be a it would be a an LS that you want to make about a thousand horsepower with. So it will be more laggy on a 4.8 than it will on a 6 liter. It also works on a 5.3. It'll be most responsive on a 6 liter. But, and, and, and the big T6, because these are, those are T6s. Um, a, a, T, a 6 liter would be a good application. But also, guys, we've run them on 5.3s as well. I'd love to put a turbo on my buddy's uh, Mud Dragster. It's a simple 350 Chevy. It would certainly make more power. Can you tap the top of a mechanical pump and add boost reference to the diaphragm? You know, Honda Tech, I don't know. I We were looking at weight. Well, we were looking at the electrical ones, and we I don't think we could do that because we were looking at the blue and red pumps back in the day. But I don't know if, I don't know if the mechanical pump would work like that. Maybe it would because it's, it's got a spring and a, and a diaphragm, but I don't know if the diaphragm was designed to, um, although if, if it holds vacuum, it should. I don't know. That's an interesting point. I, I We'd like to try that. I've seen guys try to use those mechanical fuel pumps and drive them and use them as vacuum pumps. So they must seal on the vacuum side at least fairly well. Overbuilt. I'm, I'm having fun waiting on a call back from a company that sent the wrong stuff. <laughs> the, but when they sent the wrong stuff, was it the wrong, like, good stuff? That's what we want.
uh, Pro Charger or CSU bonnet. I don't know. I have don't. I haven't done a test of particularly of those two bonnets. What I can say is, if you find a bonnet that works with the carburetor that you have, you should kind of stay with it. That always seemed to be the problem for us is getting the signal to the carburetor correct. And like I said, it was re if we turned the thing like even 15 degrees to one side, the thing just would barely even run. I'm getting an 80s 350 for a different product, Turbo Center. What, uh, yeah, just let us know. I have lots of small block Chevy stuff up. Have you seen the episodes of Power Nation where they hooked two big blocks together and then doubled the horsepower? I haven't seen that. They were able to hook them together and run them on the dyno? Pro Charger has the full box and closes the entire car. Yeah, Vortec and Paxton have those. I don't know if I've seen a um, the Pro Charger carbon closure. Pro Charger, uh, I'm, I'm seeing their bonnet. So let's see. Carb, excuse me, carbon closure. Let's see. Carbon closures are not cheap, that's for sure. Let's see. Supercharger carbon closures from Summit Racing. See Vortec ones, Paxton. I'm not seeing a. I'm not seeing anything from Pro Charger. But they they may have one. I just don't see one. Procharger.com. They've got carburetors. Yes, we do. We have carburetors. How about you? Okay. Tuning three cylinder motorcycles taught me a lot about airflow. The middle cylinder always gets less. Yeah, I, I thought it was a Vortec. Why haven't you done anything with a Ford 3.8 liter or 4.2 liter V6? There's lots of engine families that I haven't done stuff with. Because there's a lot that I already have that I need to do more stuff with. Thanks, Turbo Kitch used to run the same style box around the carb. Yep, I have that. I have all of his stuff from way back. I'm running a CSU blow through carb with an extreme velocity bonnet on my 81 square body. So why didn't you use uh, Kevin's? um bonnet on it <laughs> everything's better with blue bonnet on it superior airflow hats how much horsepower and torque can a stock 700 r4 withstand probably not very much before it breaks Would a draw through setup be bad eventually having a solvent constantly running through your turbo it can, you have to make sure that you have a carbon seal for the turbo. And the other thing is you have like liquid hitting, hitting impellers, which I don't think is a good idea. But honestly, how long are you going to run it like that? First, I'm trying to find a video you did about power from a valve job. I think it was a 3800 V6 hand lamp versus professional job at a machine shop. I have not done that test. We were going to do it, um, but I have not yet. And it wasn't, I don't think it was on the 3800. Uh, 
Other than a boost reference fuel regulator, is it required to change your power valves with a blow-through carb? If you have a blow-through carb that's already set up as a blow-through carb, you don't have to change your power valves. The question is, why are you worried about small inefficiencies of blower carb hats when you can just add more boost? Because <laughs> we want everything and we want 50 miles per gallon. We want a time machine and when do we want it? It doesn't matter. Superior airflow hats. Uh, who is getting? Who is getting the early? Was it Centra getting a an eighties uh, V eight? If you're going to get a V eight, if you're going to get one from the wrecking yard, you should get the nineties versions. You should get an L thirty one. You should get a Vortec one, especially if you're going to keep it stock. It's a lot better. Setting up a blow through eighty nine Montero two door with a two point six. Yeah, and this works with. You can make it work with almost any kind of carburetor if you're going to put an enclosure around it. When the carburetor is put in a pressurized box, is that meant for intercooled designs? It doesn't have to. You're just pressurizing the carburetor and you're blowing through the carburetor in the same way that you would if you had a carb hat on it. And you can have an intercooler between the turbo or the blower and that, um, and that bonnet or, or the enclosure. What is something you want to run on the dyno that you haven't able to run yet? There's lots of engine families I haven't run. A, a V or V10 Triton is one of them. Brian, I have a Coleman 225 scooter from Lowe's. Recently got a Honda 670 V twin engine. I will be shortening it with. Shoehorning it with twin Audi turbos blend to do a draw through already has 500 or 5,500 views on it. So if you guys haven't seen it, that sounds like it's pretty cool. Go check out Brian Wade's. Let us know what the name of it is. Go check out Brian Wade's deal um, because that sounds pretty cool. Disneyland's in the house. I was, I was over there when I, I was at the MPMC conference. Mike's in the house. Mike, do you have that adapter plate yet for the J-Series? Come on, man. You're killing me. Missed your video last night about blowers with internal intercoolers. What's your opinion on the Torque Tech setup? They have a 4.62 valve. Wouldn't a full Vortec kit be better for power and cost? I don't know about the Torque Tech one. I haven't. I'm not familiar with that. Is that a... Is that a uh, positive displacement blower one that like they're using a Magnuson or something? <sighs> Torque Tech Mustang supercharger kit. So let's take a look. Oh, so they are using TVS stuff. Yeah. Mustang Terminator GT kit. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, that looks good. So they have an assembly designed to accept the Cobra blower, but any supercharger that is designed to fit the Cobra can be used. So you could put a candy bell or whatever on there. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That What they have basically is the intake um manifold and then i think it incorporates it incorporates an intercooler right is what what they're doing here mm -hmm. 
I'm hoping that there's an intercooler assembly in there. Frequently asked questions. Gas aluminum lower intake. On top of this lower intake is a gasket and a water jacketed drive system piggyback thermostat. Oh no, so I guess you probably take the, oh, a highly efficient air cooler that will reside inside the lower intake, okay. So they have their own intercooler. They're not using the intercooler from the O3 Cobra. That's good. That would be a good little blower in there. Yes, you need carbon seals for the turbos for draw through. Every centrifugal is a bro charger. I thought every centrifugal was a Vortec. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Is the JNL is the poncho ready to make hot water yet? I think so. I think the I think the cam has come back now. I think the cam is in the house. What would I need for 400 wheel horsepower 80s 350 NA? Uh, you'd need to do a 383 stroker, and you need to have heads and cam and intake and stuff. It'd be a lot, or or just do boost. <laughs> Oh, KD, yeah. He he does. He, we we use his air hat, too. Have you done any research and videos on K, Honda K24 motors? Yes. We ran uh, a bunch of stuff with the guys over at Skunk. We ran um, stack injection on it. We ran different intake manifolds. We ran a turbo on it. We ran cams on it. We're putting ported, a ported head on it. Those videos are up. Do you have anything on LS carb timing? Yeah, on, on all of the carb stuff we've run, the on the MSD stuff, it usually wants um, one or two degrees more than when we run it fuel injected. I think that there's delay in the MSD box. Are you talking about an NA one? An NA one runs wants to run about 31 degrees of total timing at the power peak. Yeah, blue collar, it's not it's not up there. Spectra carb hat with a four inch opening on Weber 38s or Weber 3838, 38, so the two barrel one. Yeah, get a get the the vortex small block is definitely a good way to go. Frequently asked questions. Like to get 20 miles per gallon in a Tahoe, but that would require a new rear end and a constant tailwind. <laughs> My truck gets about 19 on the freeway, and 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 that's me driving like an honest like 70 miles an hour. And so there's people that tell me, oh yeah, my my six liter gets 25 miles per gallon. <laughs> I don't know where it gets that. Uh, Richard, assuming that you've had experience working with Ford's shaker scoop Ram air system from 69 to 70, like on the Mustangs, the Mach 1s and stuff, does it work well or could you recommend improvements? Well, what I would do is, and I haven't done a test on those, but what I would do is I would take air temperature measurements and then I would also take a vacuum measurement because th those are the two things you're concerned about. Is that set up a restriction in any way? It's not going to ram air in. It's not going to, it's not, it's probably not high enough off the hood to get um, high pressure air there. But what it is, is going to be a good cold air source. So now the thing it's, it's getting cold ambient or ambient air. It's not under hood air, which is good. 
The other thing that you want to do is not allow it, if it has a snorkel, to grab air from the hood. So I block that off, assuming that you have enough flow. So I don't know what the flow rate is of that system, but it will manifest itself in having um, vacuum. So you can take a vacuum reading either above the carburetor, if this is a sealed system, or under the carburetor and see. I'm losing the wheel to work on my truck. I'm just going to buy a new Sierra and forget about it. I feel that way sometimes. Central Texas is in the house. Sunny and warm in downtown Disney. Uh, Brian Wade, Wade's auto and performance with underscores. He's put that in the captions or, or in the comments. If you guys want to take a look at it. That sounds like a cool deal. DMC, so you're listening while you're driving? Good, you're double teaming, double dipping, multitasking. Jin, I want, need cam specs for an LM7, high elevation, 5,000 to 11,000 feet for good low and mid range, 1,500 to 5,500, not looking for top end. You need a truck Norris cam. Or a torque cam. Uh, congratulations on my 408. What, what is my 408? What blower did you prefer on the 5.3? The, the Ford Racing blower that I put on there would make a lot more power than the Cadillac blower would. It has a lot more potential. The, um, I don't know about the thing that I would be interested in for an application for under the hood is which, which one would fit better. I don't know which one's taller. Question was, wouldn't the Vortec full kit make more power than a kit like the Torque Tech intake kit and be more cost effective? I don't know what the costs are on those. But a because you're using, you have to go find a an 03 to 04 Cobra blower. I don't know what the total expense is going to be for that. But if that's the blower that you're using, almost any Vortec, like an S trim or a T trim, is could make way more power than that. They're they're going to have different curves though. And lucky for you, I have a video up. It's on a four valve, but it's the same thing. But I also have a video up where we ran the Kenny Bell and ran a Vortec on it, and they were both over 600 horsepower, um, but the way that they get there is, is different. The positive displacement blowers have much more low-speed power, and quite honestly, for a streetcar, that probably would be more fun, but if you want you know, maximum power, the centrifugal is going to make more. 140 cubic inch inline Land Rover is a two barrel 350 Holly too much carburetor. No, it's not. Richard, one of the reasons I was searching a cylinder head company claims up to 20 wheel horsepower from just a performance rebuild of a cylinder head. No porting. I find it hard to believe. It depends on what they're doing. If they're milling the head and doing a valve job and, and doing bulwark that, that they're not counting as um as porting then that might be possible and it also you'd have to ask yourself what head are they comparing it to are they comparing it to a new untouched head that's working right or are they comparing it to some ratty junkyard head that has a questionable valve job and questionable ceiling anyway and build up in the ports and all that stuff because if you take a look at Eric uh, Weingartner's deal, I think that's his name. Um, he said that he changed the airflow by 15 or so CFM from cleaning the head. I haven't seen that when we've done it, but that's what he was talking about. And he does a lot more flow testing and porting and stuff than I do. So, um, yeah, so if that's the case, there could be some power. And like I said, I don't know which what they're testing it against. 20, or 20 wheel horsepower would be a lot from a good stock head to whatever they're doing to a stock head and not porting it. How 
Hypermodeling works, but it's a giant pain. And most cars around here are mad at the hypermodel for driving slow and accelerating. Yeah. But if that's your deal and you're trying to get 50, 60, 70, 80 miles per gallon or whatever, um, I always did that in my, I didn't do hypermiling specifically, but I would try to maximize fuel mileage when I was driving the Sprint Turbo to and from like Vegas to West Tech and then back. And then also the VX Turbo, or not, tur I wish it was a Turbo, <laughs> the VX Civic, same thing on the freeway. I wouldn't even drive the speed limit. I would drive 65 because it was, it felt better for the VX, especially going over rolling hills. It liked 65 better than it liked 70. Let's see here. What can, I, what can I add to my 350 small block to make uh, more power fuel injected? Which year 350 is it? Let's see. I'm scrolling back to try to find somebody was asking a question. I think I missed something here. Oh, I did. I missed a bunch of stuff here. We'll keep going. Or Camelot. <laughs> That's where I live, right? Camelot. I'm in a grocery store. I normally ask guys before making a big decision. Let's see. Man, it just clicks down a whole bunch. I have a package on my 340 Demon with a sealed top on the carb. If that counts, that does count. Mr. Norm's copier. Nice. Oh, so <laughs> oh, so I did. Somebody else was talking about somebody else's named Richard. Their four hundred eight. Okay, I get it. I'm, I'm I'm back. I'm back with you now. Did you catch the other day when I mentioned the sixty eight Catalina wagon? Yeah, that's very cool. What motors in it? Nineteen ninety eight three fifty small block. Okay, so that's a Vortec motor. The only thing they could do, like I talked about on the the cylinder head, the guys are talking about, is if they milled it and changed the compression, and then if they did a multi angle valve job, which might help it, but otherwise. It's probably not so much. <laughs> 400 two barrel. Okay, cool. Is it a, is it a, that's a, that's a Pontiac, right? The Catalina. So is it, it is a um, Pontiac 400 two barrel. So let's check our poll. 80% saying no. So we only have 20% of the people that have run blue through carbureted stuff. That's interesting. But I've been recommended in your channel on my Mustang groups on Facebook for, for any modular forward. Yeah, if you have any questions, you're, you've come to the right place. 
I literally wrote the book on modular performance. Uh, that's funny. But I did. 68 Grand Prix two-door with a 75 El Dorado and, and a 75 El Dorado. So I think I'm going to custom with the mid-engine build. There you go. Pontiac 400, all you need is the four-barrel now. Let's change that intake manifold. The two-barrel, the four-barrel was worth quite a bit of power. But now if you went with three two-barrels, then you'd be really sporty. Alan, a, a camshaft will definitely change the power output of that. I have some some Vortex stuff up on the on the channel. A camshaft definitely will help it. Uh, I, if you're keeping it fuel injected, you're gonna have to tune it. Headers will definitely help. Casey, the books are available through Amazon and and through CarTech, and I have a few here. Only fourteen though. There's more than fourteen likes, but there, we're still only fifty percent on our likes. Get those likes up, yo. I have a Jeep 258 swapped out to a four liter head and gained 25 horsepower. Nice. So that four liter head's a lot better than. I can send a picture of the Pro Charger. I I don't I don't doubt that they could have one. I mean they should. I just don't. I just wasn't able to see it when I did a search on it. Turbo 400 Pontiac in the rear of the wagon. That would be good. I have some, uh, if you're looking for Pontiac stuff, I have some Pontiac stuff. I have a manual trans that I'm selling for the young lady and a couple of Turbo 400 Pontiac transmissions as well. Adrian, you want a signed book? I'll, if I have these, if I have the ones that you want, I'll sign them. I have a lot of the Hemi books, I think, or a few of them. Alan, take a look at the comp, comp cams catalog for that. Um, you have to be real specific about the Vortex stuff because you can't run a lot of lift. You might have to, you're going to have to do something with the springs and the, you may have to cut the, the um, guides down because there's not a lot of retainer to seal clearance on the Vortex heads. I'm going to do will it run video before I can do any custom. That's good. It's, it's always cool to get them running. I mean, even just driving around, doesn't matter if it's a two barrel, it's getting it running and it's good. Remember, don't get it right, get it running, which I'm considering doing right now with the 240Z. Just want to get something in it and get it working. Uh, Casey, uh, how much for the Pontiacs? I don't know, two or 300 bucks. The bonds for most dual fuel propane systems. Yeah, it's just a, it's just anything that seals on top of it would work. Uh, K swap the Z card. Nope. The Z is, I have an RB25, which is really the motor that should go in there. But I also have a Turbo L28, uh, courtesy of Oliver. And that's kind of what I'd like to put in there. But he also has an NA one. So I, I really just kind of, because I, I want to do a bunch of testing on the L series and the RB on the engine dyno. But I would really like to get the car just running because that's one of my things for this year. So I want to get... Um, the GLH running, the Z running, and the Mustang running. I have a, the 88 5 liter LX. So I want to get all those cars running. But a K series is really good. <laughs> Admiral's in the house. Uh-oh. Puppies. Puppies are yelling. Hey, 
Admiral, you have a future test for me? Let me guess. This is a 6.2 Ford? Actually, the next modular that I would want to do will either be a 4.62 valve Big Bang motor or a V10. Uh, Laz, I just put another fuel out for an intake. Dang it, I need to... Thank you for reminding me. Call ETR LS3 intake. I have a couple calls I need to make on, to find an LS3 intake manifold. Does anybody have an LS3 intake manifold out there, a stock one? Uh, V10 three valve probably won't do a three valve. Is a, a V10 three valve is not a um, variable cam, is it? Have you ever done a testing to see how much power catalytic converters actually take? Um, well, catalytic converters is a really big subject. <laughs> so they're not all the same. So you, the question would be, it'd be like, have you ever done a test to see how much mufflers are worth? Well, some mufflers are really restrictive and, and other mufflers are not restrictive at all. Same thing with catalytic converters. Catalytic converters are more or less restrictive would you want to test stock ones? Would you, you know, it depends on what you're actually testing. Uh, you should do a 6.2, but I'd be happy with an overhead cam V8. F4 dogs would miss when they were puppies. Yeah, they're, we're going through the puppy thing right now. But we also have Milo, who is 13. He's like the big brother. I predict a crank failure. I don't think we'll take it to failure level, I don't think. There's LS3 intake manifolds on eBay. Okay. None of the V10s have phasers. Okay, I didn't think that they did, but... NASCAR stall, cal injection for NH setups. It works really good. Is there any horsepower to be gained from maximum effort? Yes, 100% there would be. Especially versus under hood... Um, grabbing air from under hood is a terrible idea. Grabbing air from anywhere outside, you can either grab it from the cowl area, which is good. There's high pressure there, especially at speed. Or you could run the big, big snorkely tubes up from your enclosed air box, which it should be enclosed or air cleaner lid or whatever. You could do this cheaply. We, we've done it all the time from stuff on the wrecking yard and run two big corrugated tubes up to where the headlights are and then get rid of the headlights or put additional headlights. Or if you have a four headlight car, which is very, very cool, get rid of two of them and then have them ducked in the cold air. Uh, is it bad to retard the cam to gain piston to valve clearance? Uh, it can change the power output. Richard, you should test 180 degree flow mufflers outlet on the same side as the inlet. Okay, so in and then out. And then we would also do, we'd also do straight in and straight out and then offset in and offset out. And then then the, then the 180 degree thing that you, you were talking about. Because we should see a difference in restriction with that kind of thing. I kind of want to do muffler tests with turbos because we want to test turbo mufflers. Which I will do. I will do an exhaust test on the 2.2. Do you replace the head gaskets on the dyno between tests when swapping out different heads? No, when I do head tests, like if I'm doing six or eight or 10 different heads, whatever we're doing, normally we would keep the same head gasket just so that we have the same thickness. And on an NA motor, you because you're only running it, you know, we might, we might make six poles and then take it off. And so the gasket, the um, like the little sealing material that they have on the gasket doesn't stick to the head because it's not on there long enough for anything to happen. So we just take it off, put another one back on, take it off, put another one back on. It's already pre-compressed. <laughs> we just torque the head bolts and away you go. Those V10 crates are pretty thin. Yeah, but we're, I mean, we could certainly double the horsepower with boost without any problem. Let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're the you can re especially MLS gaskets, you can reuse them a lot. Guys have I know Matt's reused stuff from the wrecking yard. I don't like doing that on something that has a lot of miles on it because whenever you take the head off, you it always like pulls part of the gasket apart. And I know if that you just put it right back on, it probably would be okay. But just like with um I know Matt and a lot of guys like to use factory head bolts or reuse factory head bolts. And we have reused factory head bolts a lot on NA motors. And I have run boosted, some boosted motors at low boost with sock head bolts. But when I'm running boost on stuff, I like to have headsets on. How many else engines have you led to the promise line of your testing? You mean, how many have I broke? I've only broke a few of them on purpose. Um, not, not on purpose. We just kind of wanted to find out where the destruction point was. So all the big bang motors. But we've helped a lot though. We've certainly helped more than we've hurt. That's important. So we'll go ahead and close out our poll at 82% saying that they have not run blow through carburetors. 18% saying yes. So maybe, maybe the question should have been, should you have you run EFI? <laughs> I know it's cringe, but I've reused head gaskets. Again, if that's what I had and I was at a track and I had a head gasket, oh, it would definitely go back on. I mean, if that's all that I had, I, I, I would definitely do it. But we have lots of head gaskets there. So... And, and when I'm like, when I'm doing big bang motors, I resurface the head and re we don't normally don't resurface the head because we'll put a better head on there because we want to make power, but I'll, I will resurface the block only because I don't want a head gasket failure to be the problem when we're trying to discover what is the power potential or what is the, what are the stock components capable of? We don't want a head gasket to be the thing that goes. We want one of the parts when we're trying to test and see you know, stock blocks, stock cranks, stock rods, stock pistons with ring gap, which one of those things is the limiting factor. And if you don't do the head gasket prep properly, it's going to be a head gasket. So we don't want that to be the problem. So we don't let that be a problem by, you know, doing our, doing our homework. Wow, I've while I've been talking to you, I've missed lots of opportunities at making money and, and losing money. Let's see. V10, what heads would you use? We would just port the stock heads. I've been told running vacuum advance on 11 to 1 compression motor will cause severe detonation. Is this true? It says 36 degrees plus 14 degrees of vacuum advance. Well, you're only under the vacuum advance is part throttle. So it's very light load. So you should test it and see because that might not be the case. I don't know what um, I don't know what uh, heads are using. I don't know what octane you're using. I don't know what your advance curve looks like. I don't know any of that. What manual transmission fluids do you guys like for racing? Richard, if you have a hard time killing a 2V, you should spin it to the moon and see what RPM the cast crank will fail. We'll, we'll run into the valve train failure way before we run into a crank failure on that. There are some guys building the four valve 6.8 V10s. I've, I've seen those videos. Oh, uh, Admiral, I agree. The, the three valve V10 is definitely rated highest of, of all of those. I'm wondering about the... I haven't looked at them in detail, so I don't know if the intake on the three valve is also better than the two valve intake manifold. Yeah, Casey, send me an email. I've got some other stuff too. Um, I don't know if I've, I've got some Pontiac heads that I'm getting rid of for her that I'm selling. Um, there's a few things. Uh, I have a, a brand new Holly carburetor that needs to be sold too. Maybe I should bring it on one of these live feeds and 
I was able to get away with about 10 degrees of vacuum advance with 36 total mechanical and 11.8 to one motor. We've got an adjustable vacuum can so you can turn it down. So there's no debt. That's a good idea, have an adjustable one. But Richard, how do you know the valve train will fail first? I, I guarantee you that the stock valve train will let go before the crankshaft is if you try to rev the motor uh, on a two valve. It doesn't have enough spring rate and stuff. Let's see. My company I drive for uses Ford E350, 450, and 556.8 liter V10s and 7.3 liter power strokes with great success. 500,000 miles on gas and 600 on diesel. That's good then. The three valve would be better because it's the, a three valve head flows a lot more than a two valve head does. So it will support more power. It's already rated at more power. Um, I don't know what the cam timing is on the three valve versus the um, versus the two valve, I, but we have to kind of have cams done for them anyway. Ten thousand RPM V10. That seems like it would be a lot, <laughs> unless it's a Formula One V10. I, th I think it would be cool to have, because um, I'm sure the guys from Schneider will regrind the cams. So if we regrind the cams, shim the lash adjusters, port the head, and then I'll have to see how the intake manifold is. But then I'll bet we could do a super richy dual plenum cross ram for it. That would be good. The cams like to crack if you regrind them. On the V10s, they do. Whatever mod motor goes on next. Next, the the only one that I I wouldn't ever try to break the V10. I would just try to make more power with it. But a 4.62 valve needs to have a big bang done on it. Yeah, a, a cross round V10. It would look like a it would look like a um like a Dodge Viper V10 kind of thing. Because you know it, it should right. <laughs> This is where if I knew how to TIG weld, it would be awesome. There's a guy that will custom make V10 cams. Does he have, um, is he doing billet cams or what's he doing? Does he have cores for him? I, I don't think that the V10 would get very high in power before it let go. And, and we don't have the other things that we had <laughs> with the LS and the big blocks and all the things for the V10. I don't have an intake manifold for it. I, we don't have good heads for it. We don't have good cams for it. So we don't have the things that we need to get it to make NA power and then add boost to it. TIG welding's easy. Yeah, I just have never done it. I mean, I've done MIG welding, but and, and I don't see TIG as being too much different in, in terms of me being able to learn it. Use a Holly high ram top for the manifold for the for the V10. You mean the V10 will definitely be a dual plenum, just because it's way cooler. And the uh, Holly high ram, we'd have to cut it and and because it's a V10, it's going to be longer. We could make it look like the, um, what the heck does the, um, so we want to see what the, I need an engine photo of the McLaren.
Let's see. Engine. McLaren F1, there we go. So I can make it look like that. I can make it look like the McLaren F1. Um, with a kind of a dual plenum on top with two throttle bodies on it. That would be kind of cool. Although I don't know if that's as cool as um, like a cross ram, but but it is kind of awesome. That's that's probably my favorite car. Although it does, it definitely needs boost. <laughs> Jin, so you run your Ford buses 20 hours a day for hours and hours of idling good. Yeah, Casey, is the is the bore spacing the same on the V10 as it is on the 4.6 and 5.4? If it is, then I can use what I have, the intakes that I have, and just add, you know, just add another cylinder on each one of them. That would actually be easier. Because then, then I already have those plenums made. And I think I have... If I remember right, I think that those plenums are set up for 75 millimeter Ford throttle bodies, which is more than we would need. I think I would redo those so that one of the things I did, I made a fixed throttle body position on those and I would make it so that I would just have a standoff and then a silicone coupler and then another standoff and a flange for the throttle body so that we could put the plenum at any position we wanted and then orient the throttle body so that when we did the linkage, it just makes it easier to open both throttle bodies. That's always a consideration because we're going to do a super richie drive by wire. Same bore spacing, same eight cylinders of firing order, too. So you've already seen the the dual plenum stuff I did for the modular forward stuff. The the same one works on the 464 valve and the 462 valve. So it'll work and, and, and on the three valve, I actually made a designate, a, a, a dedicated three valve intake manifold and I made a dedicated two valve non PI intake manifold. And I didn't ever make a dedicated four valve manifold. Um, look at the V10 front rod cap. It's for two cylinders. I, there, there are all sorts of potential problems with the motor that doesn't stop me from wanting to run it and, and like doubling the power output and making it look cool. So the first thing I would do is get it up on the dyno and make it run. Does anybody have headers for the V10? Or Triton V10. Or Triton V10 headers. Oh, yeah, those are cheap, too. Those are only like $1,500. Yeah, no, we're going to, that's a hard pass on that. Uh, Summit Racing comes to the rescue. We got lots of shorty ones. We don't want no stinking shorty ones, though. Doug Thorley Tri Y headers. Ford pickup, only four left in stock, and they're showing they're showing V eight headers though when they're showing the picture. There we go. There's some. Oh, Headman's, nice. Oh. Shipped in March. Yeah, no hard pass on that. Although it wouldn't be till then. 
Banks power. Doug Thorley, try wise. That's what we need, right? We need try wise for the V10. So there are there are headers for them. Not in stock. And then we need to do a 10 into one header, right? For the V10. Uh, Robert, I don't know what you mean by retorque GM crates. Steve, you have a set of thoroughly tri wise in your garage for the V10? Um, Rob, take a look at, there are different sources for CNC porting the stockheads. Lots of guys do it. Texas Speed does. The guys from Total Engine Airflow, K-Tech does. There are lots of, and lots of different costs for those. So take a look around and shop. I think that K-Tech has a pretty good price on theirs for what they have as like an introductory CNC deal. Richard, when sawing welding on O2 bungs, we normally put them in the um, in the collector. When we do 802s, they're in the pipe, in the primary. One uno momento mas, por favor. Who's going to get the last question? Uh, Donald, yours is going to be the last question. <laughs> Two valve or three valve. We're leaning toward the three valve because it has better head flow. So what we need to do is like a cross ram and then headers that come up and then go back from the dyno. So it looks like the, like the Lamborghini um, boat engines. Because that would be that'd be super cool, and and it'd only be I'm sure a million dollars to have that done. And on that note, it's time to go. Man, I need to shave. Time to go. But I will see you guys all tonight. I will be back. Thank you guys for showing up. Bow 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 bow.